My god, this trailer showed us so much stuff. Too much stuff. I wasn't expecting another installment until the rumored Switch Pro became a thing. And who knows, maybe it will be since 2022 is still some time off. But let's dive on in and try to decipher what this trailer is trying to show us. The world of the Splatoon series is based around the idea that human civilization is extinct and these squid kids have taken over as the dominant species. An apocalyptic world isn't out of nowhere, but this specific one seems to be the result of chaos. I had no idea what this game was at first, but now looking at it, there is some caution tape on a box that shows some of the inkling language. But who would have been able to make that out after the expected disappointment of not getting Breath of the Wild 2 news? Then we see the inkling. Oh, the most beautiful sight in all the direct. The glasses are very reminiscent of the Octo shades that we got in Splatoon 2, and we see little buddy. Ah, oh, small fries were the bane of my salmon run existence. The trailer has changed everything. Look how cute. Okay, now to the crazy number of awesome customization options. Style, which is Inkling versus Octoling, as well as different eyebrow options. Our Inkling here has the edgy slit in her left eyebrow, but if you look closely at the four different options, they all have slightly different eyebrows that come with them. Skin tone, and holy crap, every eye color under the sun. We even get these triple colored options. These could totally change between now and release, so don't fall in love with the style yet. There's still an entire year for developers to mess with stuff. Then we can pick our hairstyle, and there are so many. We don't see all of them, but we get a good chunk. The ones we definitely don't see here are the Octoling hairstyles. The Octos have different tentacles, so their hairstyles will most likely be different from the Inklings. But it is cool to see the many hair options that we do have, some even reminiscent of cut concepts from Splatoon 2. The legwear is all stuff we've seen before, except this one. I don't know if they're baggy shorts or another skirt with tight pants underneath, but then this one looks like the skirt or shorts with the tight leg combo. Again, these could all change, but the fact that we have so many customization options is amazing. And then we can customize little buddy! Oh! There are seven different hairstyles you can give them, and none of them are a bad choice. The Inkling then proceeds to take off and walk in front of the We Hate France propaganda. It makes me wonder if this is just a cute way to introduce us to the chaos that the last year and a half has caused, or if the side-scrolling part has any significance for a game mode. We do get to see little buddy being super cute. Whatever reason it was for, it was definitely necessary. Just look at him. The next scene shows the Inkling waiting for the train and riding it to Splatsville. I wonder if this is just a get to the square scene, or if the train will be more prevalent in the story like it was in Octo Expansion. Splatsville is part of the larger Splatlands. Would this train bring us to the different land of Splats? Or will the only other world be the single player area, and that's what's called the Splatlands instead of Octo Canyon or Octo Valley? The Inkling is hugging a backpack. There's a poster on the wall, maybe of a new band or a brand, and a fish that is reminiscent of species we saw underground in Octo Expansion. We finally land in Splatsville, and my god, this place looks amazing! It's packed with people, apartments, buildings, signs, and various objects scattered all around. This part goes so fast, it's hard to notice everything there is to see. And the Splatoon 1 callback with the music, oh my god! We can see the curly hair pigtails return on this inkling here. She's wearing the b-ball jersey that we have in Splatoon 2, as well as what looks like the golf visor. It makes me wonder if a lot of the clothing is returning, or if these are just placeholders while they've finished development. There are a ton of brand signs and stickers all around. Whether they're clothing brands or just random shops to fill the city and make it look more populated and chaotic is the question. On the left, we get a look at an inkling wearing very basic clothing. There are two more inklings standing in front of a gated building. We also see a red mailbox-esque structure. I'm assuming this is where we continue to make Splatverse posts. This scene is probably supposed to just add to the chaos and isn't a sign of us actually being able to fly to places, but one can dream. The most notable thing in this next image is the huge pig above the doorway. There are these cool squid ton stickers on the sign next to it. I hope this is a new brand. Just by their logo, I can tell their clothes would be so chaotic and fun. The next image doesn't have anything that sticks out too much besides the storefront logos and stickers all over the place. It's possibly an alleyway? I'm assuming some type of Salmon Run mode is returning based on the appearance of Little Buddy, and I gotta say, I'm really happy about that. I love Salmon Run, and there's so much potential for lore. There is this shiny purple thing, I'm not sure if it's a light or what, but it's pretty, I guess? <laughs> the next quick screen shows what looks like the lobby entrance, it has the same logo above the door, and even has the word 3! Yay, Splatoon 3! Here we actually get a farther back view of the lobby entrance. On the far right, we've got Longboy. New jellies, yes. 
If the jellies had a huge part in this game, aside from Joe Alfonso, I would be a happy squid. A bit above Jelly Boy, we see the same sign as before. This allows us to get a better perspective of Splatsville. The lobby entrance is to the left of the yellow inkling from the previous images. Ammo Knights is in the bottom right, so we know that Sheldon, or some type of weapon dealer, is returning. It'll be interesting to see if they bring over the NPCs, especially seeing as Splatsville is so far from Inkopolis. Will there be more chaotic versions of the previous special characters? I haven't spotted any sign of Krusty Sean or his branded truck. There are these shrimp-like tail fins on this sign, but they're slightly different from Sean's logo. I like the tickets and the drinks. I hope they return in some way. We get a better look at Ammonites in this final Splatsville image, and we can even see inside of it. But unfortunately, the image is too blurry to really make things out. Maybe ink tanks on the wall, or extremely large suction bombs in what looks like to be boats hung up in the window. Now for the battles. E-leader scopes are returning, but this time with a blue tint instead of yellow, as well as the dynamo roller and the range blaster, though the blaster has a slightly different look. It'll be interesting to see if they are redesigning the same weapons just to change things up, or if the weapons themselves will be slightly adjusted, like longer range, wider range, etc. On the other side of the stage, we see the return of the sloshing machine, Splattershot, Hydra, and 96 Gal. They all seem to have some slight design changes, so maybe they aren't complete refreshes of weapons, but rather just something different to look at. The developers spend so much time doing balance patches, it doesn't feel right that they would completely change how each weapon works. It just makes more work for themselves. We get to jump off espresso machines, keeping the theme that we love ink on our drinks. We finally don't have to worry about being spawn camped, now that our drone espresso machines carry us safely. And we can choose where to jump to. We get to see the new bow in action shooting three shots toward the enemy while dropping ink on the ground in front of the player. Another image shows the player squid turning around and performing a spinning action reminiscent of the Kraken from Splatoon 1. Apparently this is called a squid rule. We also see a player swimming up to the top of a tower, jumping off the top and attacking from above. This is called a squid surge. These new moves would be cool to change up the normal gameplay we've been used to for the last two installments. Helps you dodge shots and approach from new angles. There's a new special in the back, and has three ink tanks attached to it and shoots three extremely large paintballs into the air. We see the same special in the next scene, but this time it only has one ink tank left. This suggests that the player can probably choose when to release each of the three shots. When this weapon is shot, the ink tank pops off, showing how many shots the player has left. It's kind of a reimagined ink zooka. Very exciting. There's also a reimagined stingray that shoots out seemingly six shots. We see it work for a quick second in the trailer. It looks like the rays are shot in pairs and can be controlled while shooting. Hello crab, new type of bomb probably, possibly replacing the auto bombs. We get one last look at the new Inkzuka-ish special held by the bow player, and then the trailer ends. I am pumped for this. I fully expect a test fire demo when we get closer to release, probably the super basic weapons for us to play like last time, and another pre-Splatfest I'd be down for. Now all we must do is wait for more information. I want them to take their time. The developers have been so supportive of Splatoon 2. Almost four years since release and we're still getting balance patches, Splatfests, and map pictures. Though the Splatfests and maps are probably ending now that Splatoon 3 is announced. I can't contain the excitement, which is bad because we have a whole year before we get to experience the fun. What was your favorite part of the trailer? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye!